six ish, probably a little bit less. Three point three point five zero. That is the acceleration. Or sorry, three point five five zero. So that is the acceleration. That is the acceleration. Because the object is moving. Yes. Okay. So why did you make us use a static form? Because we needed to see if it was moving. Oh, okay. Um, what value would be the minimum for like determining whether or not it is moving? If it's just a positive number, then you know that it's overcome. Yes. It's static. If it's if we get zero the first time through, then it's right at the cost. Is it safe to assume that it's going to be moving if it's on a negative slope or a positive slope? What do you mean by positive slope or negative slope? Would you consider that Box? negative slope? Yes. Um, if it's not this. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to assume that it's moving? No. Okay. Stephanie. What if you get a negative? Would your acceleration just be negative? No. If you got, all right, so let's run through that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to change a number over there using the magic of a board. All right, so instead of 0.4 here, suppose this were 1.0. Which would be rather <laughs> extreme. Then this would be, this is roughly, this is approximately six, and this would be approximately minus approximately eight. So negative two. So you get negative two. We have an acceleration. We know physically that if I put a mass on a ramp like that, if it is going to move, it is going to move down the ramp just from life knowledge. We get a negative acceleration here, which tells us, oh, if we're looking at the, if we're using this friction force here, that thing's gonna go up the ramp? That does not make sense. Remember, this is the maximum static. Static is always just enough in order to match it until you hit the breaking point. So what we have here is the fact that if we have a negative acceleration, that is physically impossible, therefore it is not going to slide, it is stuck. If, yeah, and so therefore the acceleration is if it's not going to slide. Zero. Yes, zero meters per second squared. The friction force is, giving my crude numbers here. The friction force? Yeah, what, what's the matter? If it's not sliding, what is the amount of friction force? Zero. Yes. If it were zero, no, I think the friction was. Equal to or more than the force of sliding motion? Uh, it would have to be equal to. <coughs> so okay. it would be six newtons. Ish. Okay. Because again, the static friction is always going to match what's needed to keep it still until you hit that breaking point. So what would happen? Is it possible for friction to be more than? In a problem like this, no. In other situations, yes. I mean, friction can accelerate. It what? Here's friction, an object accelerating in the direction of friction. It's friction which is causing this mass here to move horizontally. Because if it were frictionless, this mass would stay like that and it would go this way relative to the box. Therefore, the friction on the mass here must be that way as I move it like this. Wait. So we said the friction would be equal to what? If the friction is equal to the downward force, the, the six. Sorry, down the ramp force. Got it. Questions before I give you a problem in which a negative acceleration does not mean it's not sliding.
Uh, this week's lab should be posted already, and uh, we've basically done a run through of the pre lab. you drew this closer to the way the numbers are labeled, then it might be a little bit obvious which way this is going to actually move. But let's assume that we don't know. Well, I, I picked numbers that I didn't have to think too carefully for to know which way it's going to slide. Uh, let's keep it frictionless. like this, I don't know which way it's going to go, I'm just going to pick it. I'm going to assume that the whole thing's going to slide basically to the left, so I know, so that's going to slide that way, that's going to go that way. So they would have the same acceleration with an ideal rope, they will move the same, have the, they will move the same distance in the same amount of time. I jumped into the second step. The first step, force diagrams, we've done plenty of those. So that's my three kilogram. Uh, so I have, I'm just going to cut to the chase here. W sine, what I'll label as theta three. I'll call this theta five. W cosine theta three tension and normal force. And for the five kilogram mass, we have tension, W, try that again, so that Y3, Y5, W cosine theta five and W sine all right. Next step. Uh, we've done the gone through the decomposition phase. Oh, coordinate axes, we skipped that step. Yeah. Now these are two different angles here, setting up one coordinate system for both masses does not make sense. But again, we stick with things going in the direction of the acceleration. So I have, I'll have one, I'll call this I3 hat, and J3 hat. And then over here, I'll have I5 hat, and why not? A5 hat. How many equations of motion will there be? Four. And what are they? Okay, we can start off with I hat, which is. Um, which I hat are you doing? Um. Five or three? Three. Sorry. Okay. So that would be. That'd be W sine theta three minus uh, the tension equals. Mm, 
mass time acceleration. One small issue. And some students will write this and they'll correct it later, but let's see if we can correct it now. Oh, mass three. Yes. Ah. The masses are, we have two different masses here. Okay, one equation down. acceleration and then j hat 5 is um, weight cosine theta 5 minus normal 5 equals mass 5 times 0. Okay. All right. Dramatic pause for questions? I did forget to label something. Is it the tension? Pardon? The tension? Oh, uh, no, the tension's fine. Tension is Assuming it's an ideal rope yeah. that, and the tension and the rope is parallel to the ramp. It was, the, it was very similar to the mistake to the one that Moran originally made. This is W sub 3, W sub 3, W sub 5. All right, now substitution. Hopefully at this point all of you are comfortable enough with the formula for weight. Yes. So I got M3G sine theta 3 minus tension is equal to M3A. And I have tension going to the third equation minus M5G sine theta 5 is equal to M5A. The other two equations are not going to have any play here. You can make the substitution if you wanted to. So I got Y3 equals M3G cosine theta 3. And Y5 is equal to M5G cosine theta 5. But without friction, the normal force does not have to play in this particular problem. Not always the case with normal force, but it is here. So I'm uh, looking at that first equation there. I know the masses, I know, let's assume, or I know theta, I don't know tension, I don't know acceleration. So I'm basically going to add these two equations together. If I add the left hand side, so I've got a negative tension and a positive tension, they will cancel out. And I'm left with M3G sine theta 3 minus M5G sine theta 5 equals M3A plus M5A. Uh, 
uh, I can't cancel anything out. What I'm left with the acceleration is m3g sine theta 3 minus m5g sine theta 5 divided by m3 plus m5. And another potentially overlong pause for questions. This next step is just when we put all our numbers in, like our thetas and the minuses. Yeah. Okay. Then the last step, plug and jump. Have a negative acceleration. What does this negative acceleration mean? That friction is equal to. There's no friction involved. Oh, yes. We have made the assumption without any extra knowledge of this is going to accelerate like that. Our negative acceleration this time means. Again, negative means it's the other direction. It's just, is it physically possible? Well, yes, it is. We just chose the wrong direction, and it's going to accelerate like that. So negative acceleration. In one situation, that acceleration is zero. In the other, in the other situation, it means oh, it's accelerating the other way. <coughs> I find it helpful to think, all right, this is possible. So when I get in a negative, the negative means it's going the other way. Is that possible? Well, yes, it is. And if I had drawn this, so this was actually closer to a thirty-degree angle. So let's see if I can. That. So if that's about a 30 degree angle, and that's a 53 degree angle, and then let's make my five kilogram box bigger than my three kilogram box. I, I think drawing it this way makes it a little bit more, a little bit more obvious that it's going to go that way. All right. Questions before we do one more variation of the thing. So I'm going to take this problem and I am going to 
go to the right one. I am now going to add the, we're going to keep it frictionless, and I'm just going to tell you that it's an equilibrium. Now, based on the test, some of you are still unclear about what equilibrium is. What does equilibrium mean? Not really. It's not really. It's friction and uh, velocity. It has nothing to do whether it is moving or not. If it's not moving, it's static equilibrium. If it is moving, it's dynamic equilibrium. But equilibrium by itself is not telling us if it's moving or not. Everything is equal. Say it again. Not everything, that's a rather broad statement. The forces on it are acting on it, right? So the for like the forces are acting on it, right? Uh, I think the spirit of what you're saying is right, but the way you worded it is not. If the forces are equal, what do you mean by that? No. <laughs> Okay, do the forces balance out? Yeah. All right. Another way of wording that is the total force is zero. 